You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here talking with James Topp, a veteran of 28 years of service with the Canadian Armed Forces. James is now marching across Canada from Vancouver to Ottawa as a form of protest. To learn more, please check out canadamarches.ca. James, thank you for your service, and thank you for taking time to talk to me. Thank you, Derek. Thank you for having me on the show. So where are you right now? Uh, well, right now we're heading into uh, Musamin, but uh, that's just because we're spending the night there. Uh, where I stopped for today was uh, about two kilometers past the Saskatchewan Manitoba border on a side road. We got uh, we got 51 kilometers in today after about 11 hours, and so I was uh, happy with that. And we're going to uh, we called it a day there. And um, it's just, uh, we, this is day 66 of the journey. We started on um, February the 20th from Vancouver. Uh, we uh, just outside uh, uh, BC Place at the Terry Fox Memorial is where we started on February the 20th. And uh, we've been at it ever since. And where do you hope to be tomorrow? Tomorrow I'll probably be uh, between um, the border and a uh, there's a, a few villages on the way, or small towns on the way, um, whose name escaped me at the moment, but there's Elkhorn, I remember, and Verdet, which are, are towns in uh, just over the uh, Saskatchewan Manitoba border, so we'll probably be in the, in the vicinity of one of those towns tomorrow. So the, basically how I've been doing it is uh, I had lots of... The, the average that I wanted to attain was about 40 kilometers a day. I fell below that average coming through the mountains. And now I'm trying to pick it back up again on the prairie. So we've been averaging about 50 kilometers a day on the flatland. So that's, that's um, in an attempt to bring us up to, uh, to bring us into Ottawa on target date of in and around the end of June last week of June. I was going to say, it seemed like once you guys hit Alberta, you just kind of motored right through Alberta, and now you're motoring right through Saskatchewan, and you're doing really well. Have you figured out a good strategy to relax your legs at the end of the day? Well, basically, uh, I I have no energy left at the end of the day, so a shower or a, a bath if it's available, and, uh, you know, just getting a good night's sleep is uh, is mainly what has get, been getting me through this. But I have to say that, you know, the whole journey up to this point, uh, the first few weeks work, you know, a conditioning exercise. So, um, you know, your, your body will adapt up to this kind of thing over time. And it's not like, uh, you know, I wake up in the morning and I have to crawl out of bed. As long as I get a half decent sleep in the evenings, I'm, I'm pretty much reset for the next day. And I know a lot of people have been coming up to you guys and uh, seeing you along the way. A lot of people are probably bringing you gifts. And I'm sure that some of those gifts you probably have an abundance of and other gifts you might actually want. Is there something that you would actually prefer and something that you get in a huge abundance of? I, I don't prefer anything. The fact that anybody uh, takes the time to stop and even say hello and offer some encouragement, that's... That in itself is, is all the gifts I need, to be honest. I mean, this whole journey has uh, opened my eyes to the real generosity of Canadians. And, um, you know, they've opened their homes, their arms, and their hearts to us. <clears throat> Initially, when I had thought this uh, up, it, it was going to be a one-man show. And it turned out when I made my announcement video... Um, Plenty of folks online and in, rea- in, in the real world wanted to take part in this. So it kind of grew from there. And what we're finding, you know, this, this turned into a team effort. And it's the team that has got me where I am, well, got us where we are. And we've got there as well through the generosity of, of the Canadian public. You know, like they give us donations. The gifts are great. Like, I mean drawings from little kids. I don't have any kids of my own, so, you know, like, it, it, it means a lot to me. 
the mementos, folks, give me, I, I, that has deep meaning, you know, and when somebody gives you an object or something that is important to them or, you know, has meaning to them, that, that means a lot to me as well. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't know, does that explain it? Yeah, and I, I'm sure that it must be kind of overwhelming as, as well. So many people coming up to you, offering you encouraging words. Uh, what, do, what do people often say to you? Uh, the most that I hear is they say, thank you for doing this. And, um, I, I had not really realized, you know, the state that we were in as a Canadian society when, you know, we've, we've had this kind of divide um, inflicted on us. And, and, you know, there was, uh, at some point, you know, uh, there was a need for this kind of thing for this group of people who felt um, ostracized and, and, and pushed to the, uh, to the margins. So, you know, they say, thank you for doing this. It's their way of not, like, I'm in a unique position because I don't have a family of my own. Like, I have, you know, half-brothers and sisters and stuff. But, you know, I was able to, um, to, to do this journey. And uh, with the help of the team that joined me here, it's like, um, that's, the, that's what I hear the most. You know, they say, thank you. They say, thank you for doing this. Thank you for standing up and saying something and, um, and being that voice for them. And that's what I want to do. That's what I want, you know, everybody to understand that I'm speaking from a, pro, uh, you know, this is a form of protest. And it, it took me that, you know, to feel that level of uh, suffering, to really realize that I wasn't the only one in this kind of position when I started encountering folks who were, um, you know, had been in similar situations. Like, you know, um, for myself, I was put on leave without pay from a public service job that I had. Um, you know, not... The vaccine is secondary. It's more the it's the it's the disclosure of private information that I object to. It's it's uh, the overreach of government that I object to. It's um, it's not having the ability to answer questions or ask questions or, or anything like that that I have an issue with. That that's primarily my my you know I don't believe that the government has the right to tell me how to be healthy or what it takes to be healthy. And so, you know, for, because I have that, that, you know, how do I put it? Those are my guiding principles. Um, I'm denied a paycheck because of that. And there's a bunch of other folks who are in the same position. And, and being pushed off to the side and, and having it so hard for us to raise our voice, it seems like it's no one wants to listen. Has anyone from the mainstream media bothered to contact you? Yeah, um, initially I was contacted by um, a, a woman from the CBC. Um, when so, I, like, I'm not sure if your listener is aware, but I did made a very public video uh, on uh, where I went to a rally in uh, in Sumas, British Columbia, right. and I had my uniform on and I announced my intention to do this and why. And um, so some, you know, somebody at CBC had seen that. And they, and they asked for an interview, like, w within a day or two of that being released. And when she contacted me, I declined just because of uh, the fact that I wasn't really ready to articulate um, the reasons why and what was motivating me in a, in a clear fashion. And I didn't want it to get taken out of contact, contact if you understand what I mean. Absolutely. It's it's important that we uh, feel like our voices aren't being somehow twisted and our words aren't being taken out of context. This is, seems to be very easy to do to people nowadays. Uh, yeah, and, and but to, to answer the rest of your question, I have not been approached since that, that point, that time. By, uh, we did get uh, a little bit of um, attention from CTV coming into Regina, and uh, there was a short piece Although at that particular point, I didn't really have, because I, I have a target um, for the number of kilometers I have to achieve in a day. 
And so when the CTV camera came up to us, I was already kind of on my way. So I didn't have time to speak to the, to the, to the camera guy. So they took some footage and they used the press release that we had put out. And uh, so that was actually featured on, on CTV Regina. And is, is a lot of this uh, new to you? Is, is, is just the, the fact of being an activist in a way, doing any form of activism? Have you done much protesting in the past yourself? Zero. 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 Like, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm coming out against my own employer. Um, this is a, some, uh, I w- I'm in a position I never, in a, uh, you know, would have thought that I would be in. Um, <laughs> so, you know, no, to answer your question, I've never been remotely interested in protesting or, or anything like that. And it just... Um, you know what inspired me was this was this uh, lack of of dialogue between our, our, our government representatives and the folks affected by these mandates. And then, you know, of course, what inspired me as well was truckers and the freedom convoy. And then I was also subsequently outraged by the fact that um, you know they weren't listened to. Yes. At all. And then, and then, so, and they were also, um, you know, insulted. So and that was kind of uh, one of the things that motivated me to do this. So that was, you know, like I never, after two years of kind of, um, you know, being uh, batted around by mandates, that was the point where I, I think where I just I I realized okay something has to be said and done, especially when I saw veterans now being abused at uh, the war memorial because, you know, they were standing up shoulder to shoulder with the, with the uh, truckers, which that is another thing that inspired me greatly, watching, um, watching my brothers in arms, brothers and sisters in arms, standing, uh, you know, in solidarity, solidarity with, with, uh, with the truckers and with the Canadian public. And you, you've already given this country 28 years of service in the Canadian Armed Forces. You could have just went and just turned off the TV and tried to ignore it, and it just kept getting pushed into your life. And you, you figured out at what point you wanted to raise your voice. But there are so many people out there right now who are still afraid to raise their voice. What would you say to them? Well, I've said it before to some 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 folks as I have gone across and had these talks and stuff that I've been fortunate enough to, you know, be able to have an audience. And I just, I tell them, you know, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you not to be afraid. That's not how it works. That's not how humans are wired. You know, we have fear in us and it's part of our survival mechanism. And sometimes it keeps us grounded, right? Right. Fear is, fear is there. It's in our minds, but it's a feeling at the end of the day. Um, you know, it's, it's not, you know, fear itself can't hurt you unless you let it. Right. To a point where it is, it is handicapping you. And you have to recognize that, you know, you don't have to fight your fear. You don't have to grapple with it. You don't have to pretend it doesn't exist. Just be friends with it and find out what you're, if you're, what you're afraid of is actually worth being afraid and it's worth, worth uh, what it's costing. Because that's what I came to the conclusion, like being afraid of raising my voice was was costing me, you know, um, uh, you know, my self esteem and my sanity and and a number of different things. When, when you get to Ottawa, if the prime minister was to come out and greet you, and if they asked you why did you come here, what would you tell them? I would tell them. The reason why I went there is to tell them to reestablish contact with the Canadian public who they serve and recognize the damage that has been done to a section of this population who have stood up for their bodily rights and to inform them that they have no idea. I don't believe that they have any idea of the suffering they have inflicted. I, I, I absolutely, I would, I would be able to recite a number of personal accounts now, and that's one of the things that we're doing here at Canada Marches, you know, when folks come up 
Sometimes they like to say hello, and I also ask them why, and they have been personally affected by job loss or by a divided family, and, and these are the things that I would like to, to tell the Prime Minister's office is that you need to be aware that there is a section of the population who feels that the government does not care about them, and, and they need to reestablish that that contact with those people in the Canadian in the Canadian public, so they can uh, build trust again in our institutions. Very well said. I would like to thank everyone who listened to this. You've been listening to the Peach Pit. I've been talking with James Top. If you would like to learn more, please check out CanadaMarches.ca. James, once again, thank you for your service and thank you for taking time to talk to me. No problem. Thanks, Derek.